to this video in this mini series we are going to be building a to-do list app full crud using Next.js and react now both of them are the really fast technologies like golang is way faster than node.js or you would say python like python is not comparable to uh, golang like it's way faster so if you want to use golang in your projects definitely do it will improve improve the performance of your web application tremendously next is react uh, we all know react and we all know next year so i will be combining these two technologies together so let's get started so i have done a pretty basic setup here i have created a to do database uh, we will be doing in mysql tutorial for this but now we will be doing in mysql because most of the people right now are using mysql so why not use that so I have created, I have uh, started my XAMPP server and we have to do and to do and we have this basic task uh, to do table in which we have ID, we have task name. So that's it for the to do table. Now let's get started and open up a Visual Studio code. So I have created a go mod in it. So you have to just do go mod. If you could not see, let me do it a little bigger. So you need to do go mod in it and name of your application. I have created it back in to do. So you need to do this and hit enter. Now, after that, you need to install two things. One is Gorilla Mux router. So you can go to search for Gorilla Mux router. And there you just need to copy this command and run. Next up is the MySQL driver. You need to copy this command and run. If you have successfully installed both of them, uh, you are ready to go. Now let's get started with this server.go now before writing any of this let's plan out what do we need we need a to do let's forget about the front end let's uh, first think about the back end like for the back end phase we need index right so first thing is we could use index page for getting all our to do's okay so the slash is going to be all our to do's insert is for going to be inserting so let's do it all of this at action before that let's say to do so to, we need to make a struct of that so i'm going to make a class of to do so type to do so what is this in golang uh, type to do struct is basically it's working like a class so if you are familiar with other programming language you have class to do and we have all the necessary functions regarding that to in that class but we don't have anything fancy in golang like this uh, we will create a struct and we would assign something like let's say some parameters to that struct so we could guess a full-blown class activity but for this purpose we only need that to do struct and we we only need that to serialize and deserialize our data now to do is going to be to do id and to do id is going to be an int next up is to do status uh, to do name and that's going to be a string Next up is to do status and that's going to be our int. Now, when we serialize this data, so let's say we are serializing this data, this data will be coming like this, to do id and let's say my to do, something like this. So what do I need is I don't need this thing. I need let's say something like this, to do name. So you would say just change this to this. But I don't want to do that also. I want to use this and these two together. We have a thing in Golang. We could just type in JSON and pass in the parameter like this. So we could do ID like this. And I will just copy this. Paste it. Paste it here. And to do name. And to do status. So this is our struct. Now let's go to our main function and let's build up a pretty basic server. So main and here I will write fp, let's say hello golang. And now let's run go run server dot go. Okay, so here you can see hello golang. Now let's go back here. And you know we have uh, downloaded the Gorilla Mux router. What it's for? Uh, what is that used for? Is Let's say you have something like this. You have this, this, uh, let's say index. Gorilla Mux router is used to do routing. Like if you work in Django, you have routes file. If you work in Node.js, you have, I don't know what's there. But if you are in Laravel, you have again uh, 
web.php and we have api.php we define all the routes there so gorilla linux router function is to provide that routes and fix that route to a particular function let's say if we are going to index so what when we when someone visits that what function handles that request so for that uh, let me create a router uh, router instance of gorilla mux so mux dot new router so this is a router and now this is showing a red school line uh, this is telling that router is declared but not used so that's an unusual so that's not a error basically that's a, just a warning so you could ignore that and move further now I will write here router dot handle function and this I'm gonna say slash or we don't we can, we'll also do slash and the function name so let's say my function name is next and the methods on this index is going to be dot methods dot get because that's a get function we need to you know get all the to do's now to so now it's saying undeclared name index so i'm going to write a function here and i'm going to write index now here we are getting two parameters which is write response okay we are, we are getting response writer and we are getting the request so we are going to map that so w is going to be http dot response writer and we don't need the pointer here because we're just writing it but we need the uh, pointer to the requ uh, request object so the http dot request next up is let's say let me make let me run this and let's see if it's working or not and we need to also start the server so for logging things log that fatal and we're gonna say http dot listen and serve and where we are going to listen it on port 8080 and what we are uh, listening so what's the handler so http handler is a router okay so this is our thing now let me go to go run server.go hello golang allow access so as you can see here our web server is working now if you want to write something in this i can write ir.write and this write string gets a writer so where is this writer writer if you look closely we have the response writer here so we could also pass that as a thing and the string so string would be let's say hello world okay now if we reload nothing comes up i think okay so error was it was just a simple error the moment you added the go file uh, you just need to close the server and rerun it again so you can see we have hello world printed out if we write it a string let's say so let's say if i created an array here let's say my array is let's say of string should we create a string hello bye okay so we have created an array of hello bye and if we write here now as you can see here uh, this for this purpose the io dot write string is not available because now this array parameter is needed to be converted into string so for that for this purpose we have json encoder so i will write here json dot new encoder and then this encoder needs a writer so i will write here this i will pass just as we pass in the io dot writer and then we will write here dot encode and we will encode the array now if you save and so as you can see hello bye okay so uh, this was the the array no but we don't need an error basically we don't need this array uh, we need and json so for that we need to define and we needed this to do so what we could do here is let's say to do and right here let's say the to do id is one to do name is name to do status is let's say false or false okay and this should be boolean okay now instead of getting an array we are getting a json so let me rerun this again so as you can see here we are getting a json now if you want to test this uh, application you can probably go and uh, test this test the speed of this application to autocannon i'm promising you 
you will not get the speed in node.js or django or flask or fastify or fastify whatever tools you use you will not get this type of uh, performance in your applications so this was it for this video in the next video we will proceed uh, with the index function and we will get all the to do's in our database and in the in, and i think in three to four videos we will cover the back end so in the next phase we will deal with the next js